All right, hello and welcome to Ben's OP Game Show. Record live at 3 p.m. Pacific time every Friday, right here, Twitch.tv slash TheGameFanatics. On this week's show, we'll be talking about a robot named Fight, cool indie game, Octopath Traveler, holy crap, not indie, really great, the Nintendo Direct, and first up, because I got a lot of uh, positive reactions to my Cuphead kind of scripted sequence, and I've been looking to do something kind of different with the show. I'm actually coming up on a hundred episodes of this, which is is a lot of time, and I, I think time to change it up. So I'm gonna start doing some more kind of written work that I'm reading over video, and and see how that goes. That'll evolve as the show has evolved. Not very quickly. It's not a very good Pokemon. It doesn't really learn a lot of moves, regardless of when you evolve it. It's it's nonsense. But let's move on to the topic of the week, which is. Something uh, I didn't know I wanted to talk about until I found a very uh, interesting angle to pick up. Now you'll note I'm using footage of Firewatch for a very specific and we're just going to leave it unstated reason why. As I read off my script here. So PewDiePie said the n-word during a stream. What do we do now? Do we follow suit with Campo Santo and get more developers to file DMCA takedowns on its videos, potentially leading to a dark future where nothing gaming related can be used on YouTube by anyone? Do we criticize Campo Santo for doing this on a piece of content that has literally nothing to do with what PewDiePie did over a year later? Should advertisers pull out, leaving him with no promo codes or even pre-roll YouTube ads? Should we pressure those that continue to sponsor him to stop? I think the answer lies in a totally different direction, and that is, quite frankly, that I'm stunned at how many people don't seem to care about what PewDiePie said. But when I started to think about it, why should they care? Playing a game online has, can be rough. Right? You'll likely hear a big old pile of swears being thrown about, and some directed at you. Trash talk is all well and good, but when the words have a loaded meaning, it becomes something different. And the n-word is basically the king of those words. But I'm about as white as a person can get, so my opinion on that part of all this isn't really relevant. Although I firmly believe it is a word that should not be said by anyone, keep it in the annals of history, in Huckleberry Finn, and be done with it. But if you played a game online this year, last year, 10 years ago, you've heard that word and others used in discuddy, in, in discuddy, in pretty disgusting ways. And I've been trying to figure out what the root of all that could have been. And I think I figured out at least a part of that puzzle. I love South Park. I think it's home to some of the best satire and commentary on today's world. The show is crude and incendiary on purpose, and it's hilarious for it. Truly incredible stuff, but I don't know if everybody watching it gets it. Cartman constantly insults one of his supposed best friends for being Jewish. We've all heard it before, and it's funny. But it's not funny to make fun of Jews, it's funny that Cartman is such an asshole and he says those things to his friend. Cartman is not the good guy. He's anti-Semitic. Sure, that's because he's a dumb kid, but because we let too many dumb kids watch and grow up with that show and other things like it, we now have a cacophony of anti-Semitic remarks online. People that think phrases like Jew fag aren't ridiculously offensive and are perfectly normal things to say, they are not. Obviously, South Park isn't totally to blame. There are too many other factors to count, but I think you see my point. Millions of people never got the joke. Again, though, trash talk is okay, but harassment with those terms isn't. It feels threatening, unsafe, and the bottom line is that it makes people not want to play games online. Pretty much everyone I know that says they play games online says they either play in party chat with friends or they mute everyone. My experience has been the exact same. I just don't want to hear it, so I shut it off. I'm trying to unwind and play a video game after all. But that isn't new. I was doing that back at the time of Halo 3, and so have a lot of people. It seems the sensible and the decent long ago buried their heads in the sand to this whole problem. Oh, it's just a bunch of racist 12-year-olds online. It has been a joke for years and years. Well, the Oshers took its head out of the sand and discovered, 10 years later, it's still really bad out there. And not only that, those racist 12-year-olds from 2006, they're in their 20s now. I bet they're still saying some fucked up shit. There has been a history of unacknowledged complicit behavior by the primarily left-leaning games press. We knew it was bad, we ignored it, and huddled off into small, 
welcoming groups, and hope for the best. We did that, and it solved nothing. This PewDiePie issue proves that we screwed up. We let the other side take over. The yeah, just mute everyone attitude towards the online ecosystem must stop if we want it to improve. No more ignoring it. There are also people asking why pick on PewDiePie when there are plenty of others saying much worse things and saying them more often. I've seen the name iDubs, I believe it has come up more than once. Perhaps he and others are much worse, but they aren't as well known and still don't like what they're saying, but targeting the biggest, most prominent YouTuber is perhaps a better route forward. Complaining against all the lesser known idiots at the same time isn't the same as going after the biggest. It's called strategy. Google it if you're a little confused. And that's why this is all so important right now. Blizzard recently came forward and admitted that policing Overwatch has actively slowed the development of other features. So devs are trying to do something about this, but we have to do more too. We have to try and combine the groups, talk to the other side, make them understand that some things really shouldn't be said, least of all be yelled at hatefully at one another for missing a shot in Call of Duty. These people can learn empathy if we try, if we stand up for common decency. I'm not asking for safe spaces in Destiny 2. I'm not calling for a G-rated multiplayer experience everywhere. I just want people to be nicer. We've known about this issue for far too long. Let's just hope it isn't all too late to turn it around. That's what I have to say about it. I think it's pretty sad. And, and as soon as I realized that we've been letting this go, it's, it's, it's really sad when you look at it from that perspective of we just did nothing and let the, let the hate speech go and just look the other way. We have ourselves to blame. So that's good. Moving on to happier things for the rest of the show, hopefully. Hopefully happier. They'll be happier. A little bit happier. Not much happier. Hey, Will. Thanks for showing up. Hope you like my slightly impassioned speech where I made up a really cool word. It was like I mixed two of the words together. I'm, I'm a genius, basically. All right. Ten seconds to the next topic. I told you there'd be happier news. It's the Nintendo Direct. The 913, I believe, Nintendo Direct. Uh, let's talk about it. So... First, I understand the, the need to get rid of all these silly 3DS topics first. But boy, howdy, that was a lot of games. I actually did a uh, kind of a watch along. Just to, It just happened that way while I was going to be streaming at that time. Let's just watch it. And that 15 minutes of 3DS games is just way too much. We got to we gotta stop. We got to stop with that. There's so many 3DS games. And I know, oh, here's Etrian Odyssey, Odyssey you know, 7. It's too many. It's too many. And then we get to what's even more annoying. And I'm, I'm far from the first one to say this, but the 100 best Mario Party games should at the very least be on both the 3DS and Switch. I understand that most of these late and baffling 3DS games were likely started before the Switch even came out. But it's pretty clear we've moved on, at least in the gaming zeitgeist, for as popular as the Switch is and how hungry its owners are. But I think we can just... And there was that whole history where we were getting Mario Maker on 3DS much later, but we were getting those things, Wooly World on 3DS. There was this kind of, hey, Wii U and 3DS, Wii U and 3DS, vice versa, Smash and all these other games. And we're getting that with Hyrule, or uh, we got that with Hyrule Rose, we're getting that with that Fire Emblem Warriors, but where's the rest of this stuff that kind of should be on both? And then there, like this, 15 minutes of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in this presentation, which is a real, real big low point. Just not good. We did not need 10 minutes about this. I'm on the fence about it still. We'll get into that in a minute. And I still don't believe it's going to come out this year. Still, still do not believe it at all. I'll be saying that probably up until November 30th that I don't believe it. At the 11th hour, this, this can't happen. I just, I just don't buy it. And I'm not sure how I feel because I played about 10 hours of the first one on the 3DS, actually. And I, I liked it fine. And I played all of like, I played like 60 something hours of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. But even that one, I was like hate playing it by the end. It's too much of an MMO and not actiony enough. I'm kind of hoping for a demo. It's one of those games you can watch footage of 
and it either looks super boring but you think it might be fun in person but you're not sure and i still not sure and, and i played <laughs> i combined like 70 hours of this stupid game still not sure if i want the next one but after that we got some more expected updates like splatoon 2 but then it happened and not stephen king's it but doom and wolfenstein 2 on the switch and that's huge uh, i think it's pretty obvious bethesda is all in on the switch and i'm impressed but what is even more impressive is how they were able to get skyrim and doom slash wolfenstein which are built on two entirely different engines to scale down and work on the platform uh, it seems my concern for the switch not getting very many third-party ports because of its lack of power was somewhat unfounded although there was some rumblings today about doom being completely kind of redone we worked in a little bit of ways to get it on this platform but still it's impressive and, and there are also a handful of sports games coming out later this fall which are full versions of this year's titles that's great news for the switch going forward but nintendo's actions are still bizarre and maybe we'll get to that point in the video by the time i'm finished complaining about this next part the arcade archives not virtual console to add in the one final nail in that coffin which i believe is super dead uh, these are arcade versions of classic games on the NES, really, that you've heard of. Mario Bros., Balloon Fight, Kluka Land, Super Mario Bros., etc. Uh, they are, there are differences and changes and, and whatever. And there's more than the ones I listed. The idea here is nice, but this is almost uh, an insult, really. Uh, and, and as someone, an outsider, with no actual... Um, real information the money nintendo is leaving on the table by not having even just one classic nintendo game releasing on the switch per week it must be close to five million dollars a week five million dollars a week i am confident they could make five million dollars a week probably for months just by releasing one virtual console title uh, put up Mario 3, Mario World, Mario 64, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time. Put them up for sale and the numbers go even higher. Much, much higher. It honestly doesn't make sense. And even though Nintendo has been making some great decisions lately, I don't trust them to be doing the right thing with this aspect just yet. Especially with them and they're all, oh, we're making the Super Nintendo Classic. We're also making the, SE, the NES Classic again next year. For no reason. What's happening? virtual console or don't virtual console what's going on with the online service can we get some details is anything going on here at all can we please something's got to happen i do actually like this this terraformers game that could be fun not the name of the game not the name of the game but all the complaints that i have aside this was an extremely solid nintendo direct probably one of the best in years uh, looking back at all this news it's it's fantastic. The 3DS has a solid lineup for the next six or so months, and so does the Switch, with more ARMS, Splatoon 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and Mari Freakin' O, which is just... I don't even have words. I, I was trying not to watch the full trailer because there was so much cool shit being shown. I, I, I don't want to know. I already feel like I know too much that I know you can throw your hat at a at a the circle sewer lid. What is that called? The manhole. Plus, we also got Shirtless Mario, which is just taking over the internet. But we also got Doom and Wolfenstein, which is stunning. I can't believe that's real. That was the biggest thing to me. The fact that we didn't get a release for the Switch D uh, DLC for Zelda, I think, is a little disappointing. And to me, would point that they haven't nailed down the release and it could be pushed back even further. But that's it's all just speculation. Who the hell knows? So I might not understand their plan. But Nintendo is certainly going in a great direction with the Switch, and I'm very, very happy about it. And also, I didn't even bring up Project Octopath Traveler, which is the next topic. Oh my god. Let me just, real quick, I have to change things. No, it's Octopath Traveler. We're doing it live. We're doing it live, Will. It's happening. Oh shit. Can I undo that? Ah, uh, move it! Oh no! <laughs> this is why you don't do things live, because you screw it up. There. Can't wait till I get a new setup here. So, 
the Octopath Traveler demo was perhaps the biggest thing to me because uh, I'm not a huge fan of this art style. I think it looks super cool and interesting, and I'm a fan of JRPGs, but, you know, it's kind of hit or miss with some of them. But what we have here really is is incredibly compelling to me. Uh, so let's start with a little move of Octopath a little more. It's bothering me. Let's start with the, the good here. So everyone seems to like the art style. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's definitely grown on me after playing upwards of four hours, I think. Three, three and a half hours or so of this, both sides of the demo. When you beat, quote unquote, beat one side, you can just keep wandering the world and go and get the other person in your party. Um, I like that. I don't like the one person in your party at all times for the main section of this demo. Granted, it's the beginning, but as soon as I had two people and you're doing the strategy, man, the the possibilities for all that is is just so much fun. And we'll get into the battle system here, which is very unique and interesting and is all about breaking down the opponent. So it has this little weak indicator on there and you can see, oh, that person's weak to short swords or spears or dark magic but you can only see it if you've used it on that enemy before and it has this break gauge of sorts with a number on it and you have to hit them that many times with a weakness to break them when you break an enemy they don't get their turn for that round and they don't get their turn for the next round so it's, it's freaking huge it's freaking huge especially when you're only one person and you're trying to fight two wolves or something so you break one wolf the other wolf hits you, right? The next turn, the first wolf can't do anything. The second wolf, you break him. Then the next turn, he can't do anything, and the other one can't do anything either because then you break him again. So you're alternating back and forth, like break this guy, break that guy, break this guy, break, break that guy, and you're unscathed. So it has this really fun, puzzly, almost uh, rhythm game feel to it in that way. And I, as soon as I got the hang of it all, it, it's a little weird. It's a ton of fun, and there's an even other layer to this where you can, I forget what they call it, but you can kind of charge up the attacks. So it's this little meter at the top right. I, don't, I keep pointing trying to figure out which, which direction is it. It's at the top right. I'm pointing to the top left, which is, I'm, my brain does not work. So you can charge up your attack. Basically, oh, I'm going to attack once, but I press the button, now I'm going to charge twice, attack twice. And press it again now three times now four times up to up to four and you can you can store those or you can just use them each turn and have like two attacks each turn or you can store it and do four attacks you do more damage on an enemy that's broken so you want to kind of break that character and then unleash all of your attacks on the next turn and that's where the system starts really getting deep and we have that plus another character in the party plus oh i'm fighting three different guys they're all weak to different things so i'm gonna use this dark magic that's gonna break the other two characters then on the next turn i punch this guy in the middle who has six times i need to hit him so i'm whittling him down while breaking the other guys because they only have one break point i'm breaking them with a magic spell and then i'm punching the other guy in the middle to try and break him this is a boss fight and it, it's extremely involved i think overly long the two boss fights in this demo overly long you have to use items or just grind i guess uh to get through it because you're just going to get pummeled you can't get through it without using a healing item. i don't see how you could maybe you could grinding again but it, it's a ton of fun i've i i mean like i said i beat the first part of it and then i just wandered around the world and went to every part of the world found the other party member he joined my party we're wandering all the dungeons and fighting everything i leveled up to i think like level 11 with primrose and it's phenomenal the, the fact that i played a demo for three and a half hours or so is a big sign i think it's it's got some weirdness like I, i'm not a fan of the voice acting not the voice acting itself but the uh the way that's presented is still the old school like here's a text bubble and then wait to advance it to the next text bubble but the text bubble will pop up and the text will be slowly going and the voice like won't start right away the battle system hangs at certain points i don't know if it's if it's happened in this but it seemed to be at certain points i'd 
I'd trigger it, you do the attack, and then it would kind of wait. And it'd be like a three second wait where everyone's just kind of standing, doing a little idle animation, and then it would go on. Um, but it's, it's a demo and, and whatever. What I played basically turned this from kind of a silly joke about, oh, Octopath is a dumb name, but it looks cool, into like day one buy. This is going to be one of my favorite Switch games to come out next year. I can already call it. This is one of my most highly anticipated games of next year because of this. We don't get, I mean, the way they've done this turn-based traditional JRPG battle system and they've shaped it into something more resembling a fast action battle system. It almost feels like a Chrono Trigger or whatever, where you're not waiting turns. You are waiting turns, but you're building these meters up. You're exploiting weaknesses constantly, constantly, and it's required, and it's a ton of fun. It's also got these, the bosses are, like, they're normal people on the in the world, and then when you go to fight them, they're these giant hulking creatures. <laughs> for no reason with this like grotesque art style um i think right here you'll see this is why i think the art style is kind of weak uh, like the rocks look they don't look 16-bit they don't look 3d they look like ps1 plastered weird textures it doesn't quite work in certain instances also there's a depth of field um kind of blur that that goes on that it just makes it kind of hard to see there's weird fog that again makes it hard to see the beautiful potential art of this. I don't know. It seems to be it's just me who doesn't like that um, art style as much as everyone else. But the story is very interesting. So far, it doesn't shy too much away. I mean, this girl gets killed right here. Spoilers. Um, it's the beginning of the game. Just get over it. You don't know who it is. Just look away. You don't need to know. You're about to fight a giant weird clown man who at the beginning of this demo for like the first 20 minutes I'm like this demo better end with me killing him and it did it did end with me killing him I was very pleased very very pleased but that's Project Octopath Tra Traveler still it says working title they're not going to change this are they or what are they going to change it to why would you what is it just pick a name you had nine months to pick a name and you still like I don't know Octopath I don't know we can't just you're just all <coughs> what are you doing over there just pick a name pick a name or pick this name i feel like you picked this name at this point you've come out when the switch launched or the reveal thing in january or whatever not reveal but you know what i'm saying and this with big trailers and pomp and circumstance a full demo with a tentative name no it's going to be called octopath adventures or some dumb shit because now you've you've settled too far into it. Anyway, that, that's neither here nor there. The game's pretty great. This transition, oh, we should I should wait it out so you get to see the giant sprite of this guy because I think it's pretty cool. Although, you know, I think it's like it's a little, it's a little long in the tooth to get there. You know what? There's a giant sprite. Just just, just deal with it. There's a giant sprite somewhere in here, and, and it happens. Ba -da -ba -ba, giant sprite. <clears throat> so I kicked something earlier today, and I'm I don't remember when, and I'm actually not even sure it was today. But <clears throat> I was so lazy and I didn't wanna I didn't wanna like look down and you know try and stretch and see if I was blading. So instead I just lifted my leg up like on the sink in my bathroom to see if my leg was bleeding and it wasn't but it still feels like it's bleeding so that's how my day's gone in case you were curious <laughs> let me let me tell you a tale of my broken shin hey all right so this is a indie game called a robot named Fight. I believe it's made by one person, which is incredibly impressive. And I don't want to be like super critical of something that's like a ten dollar game. I, it might be on sale right now for like seven bucks on Steam, uh, especially when it's made by one person. So what it essentially is is the stopgap for until Metroid: Samus Returns came out for me, where this is a procedurally generated Metroidvania game. 
there's different collectibles and upgrades you get along the way you'll fight bosses and usually when you fight these bosses you'll find an item after them and then it says hey you've unlocked this item for all future run throughs of the game right here is actually the beginning of a run that where i did particularly well um, you start to get things like missiles and um, like a weird light around the missiles and all these other things hey mark Oh, hi, Mark. I decided I wanted to start doing that to you sometimes. But you, Delphox, you watched me play this game, and it's a pretty cool game. I think it has a lot going for it. The controls are a little loose. It doesn't have the Nintendo solid feel. But once I had a really good run like this, like a good 40-minute run of the game, where I'm getting the, the missiles, I'm getting... I didn't even get everything because I didn't get the, the double jump, but I've gotten the double jump before in a different run. And I, I like that. I like the idea of this Super Metroidvania E, that's the wave beam you need right there, uh, experience. Yeah, I like the idea of it being that, where you can just keep doing it over and over and get a little further. I appreciate the idea. It's not for me, necessarily. The entire time, like, when you die at the end and it's like, oh, I got to start all over, I kind of feel like I would have rather have played a tight, three four hour metroidvania game with these same mechanics with these same enemies with these same items and it just been said and done i would have enjoyed that more um you start to see kind of where things are always hidden the the items in the wall uh, but there are also surprise mechanics like this magic system you use i kept finding new weapons and i was like man i played this game for several runs i never got all these weapons and now i did and i got a freaking rail gun and that uses my magic meter so it's a meter like the mega man energy meter where they all have their own energy meter but this one's shared between everything did you mention the atmosphere the kind of hit or miss atmosphere um, but the energy meter is cool you get different weapons and it seems like i unlocked what like the missile launcher or something and then i don't have to find the rockets in the maze this item circumvents that whole thing which is pretty a pretty cool idea. Um, the atmosphere is an interesting point where if you look at something like that boss fight, it is just a room with a with a brain blob in it. It's not there's not a lot of pomp and circumstance about it. The music is cool throughout, but it, it is a little. It, it's just missing something. You go further and further into this weird world, and you fight all these crazy monsters, and the levels change. You know where you're in this weird cave or this is a future city garbage dump looking place and that's all cool and the music changes and that but it does kind of feel just there if that makes any sense it's not it's not anything like oh my gosh you i can't i can't forget that place i'm like i'm pretty sure i went to more places than the one i listed but i forgot what they were because it just kind of all blends together. There are some weird control things like you saw me right here get stuck in a wall for no reason. That's a little weird, um, but eh, whatever. Overall, I think for seven, you can get it for like seven dollars right now. Here's another thing you can get. Bunch of collectibles everywhere. If you like just finding collectibles, it is fun for that. It's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. My biggest complaint is like, I just rather play a tr more traditional Metroid, which is just more of a personal, a, preference but for one person making this it's extremely impressive I, I i think they did a fantastic job with it with some really cool enemies that might be a little not it's not like oh my gosh these enemies are doing so many unique things with ai they're just kind of flying around but to create a world like this is impressive it does show a lot of talent and it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination it's just not the best game ever and in a, in a year like this in a year where we're getting breath of the wild and mario odyssey and today samus returns i don't know why i'm listing all nintendo games it's it's hard to stand out it's hard to stand out in a world like in a couple months you're gonna be able to play hollow knight you're gonna be able to play axiom verge on your switch play those you can already play those on pc where this is and those are much better games those are much bigger games than this, um, but I think it's still worth mentioning. It's not, it's something you could pick up on a Steam sale. That's how I'll put it. It's something you could pick up on a Steam sale, have a good fun couple of evenings with it, 
really enjoy your time. And I think sometimes that's just what you want. You just kind of want a mindless, not in a bad way, but a mindless, yeah, let me play a Metroidvania game where I'm going to get new abilities, I'm going to fight some bosses, a truncated Metroidvania for 45 minutes, and we'll call it a day. I think there's there's space for that. All right, peanut gallery. The shows are going to be about 30 to 40 minutes now. So we're at 30 minute mark. If not mark, but the mark, the actual mark. If you have any questions, if you want to talk about anything else, about this game, about that game, about any other game, we can do it. We can have the free talk chat atmosphere that Will so desperately craves. But let's talk about Yule logs or whatever nonsense. That's what he likes to talk about. Yule logs. Otherwise, I do the show every Friday, twitch.tv slash the game fanatic. Twitch.tv. Um, TV slash the Cape and Eggs. Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'm free talking. Yeah, you are to yourself, though. Uh, da, 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 da. My own channel, Ben Reacts. I'm streaming Metroid Prime. Probably the end. This wasn't scripted. The beginning's scripted. Uh, what the hell was I talking about? Well, you're distracting. Oh, I'm streaming the end of Metroid Prime 1. I should be able to beat it in about two and a half hours or so. Get to the end of that. Have fun with Metro. Let <laughs> me run away from that demon monster. Monday is Mario Maker. Wednesday. Ooh, I need another game for, for Wednesday. I was thinking about maybe playing the Metro games. Because I have them and I've never played them. And it might be a good time to play through them. You also get to see how bad I am at first person shooters. Which really is just, it's just what everyone wants. Just, just really what everyone wants. These weird demon creatures. <laughs> oh, there's also crafting. I didn't even mention there's crafting in this game, but it, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like way too complicated, and I don't know what I'm getting. And it, it only lasts the one round, so it doesn't seem worth it. But there's crafting. You have five seconds to ask me a question. Five seconds. This is actually, I think, episode 99 of the show. So next week will be episode 100. And then I'm going to take the week off after that for the show, most likely. And kind of redo the setup and uh, figure everything out so it can kind of do like a soft relaunch for episode 101 where I find a bunch of Dalmatians and throw them in a bag, throw the bag in the river. So that's it. No questions. All right, bye. I can't I can't end it that quickly though, so I gotta kinda find the thing. These weird they're like if Blastoise and Diglett somehow made a new graphics, yeah, I do wanna make new graphics actually, too. It's gonna be a new um background. I'm gonna put the green screen back, new graphic uh package, package, and all all that. For the Ben show, it's not going to be the Ben show, but it's close to the Ben show. It's going to be more scripted stuff, not scripted for reviews necessarily, but news coverage and uh, like I did the Cuphead thing and the online toxic people thing will be scripted, which I think have gone pretty well. I like doing them. I like writing them. Um, so you get missiles in this and you get like flame missiles. <laughs> what does flame missiles mean? All right, that's it. Flame missiles. Are you going to have a live band? That's a good idea. That's a good idea, yeah. I'll write that down. I'll write that down. Thanks for hanging out. I always appreciate it. And I, th I think I will look into the live band. Yeah, that sounds like a... That sounds achievable, right? How much could a band be? Can't be that much. <laughs>